Alright, how's it going everyone? Spenny here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be turning some cassette cases into uh, Game Boy cases. Your most important things is just a printer, paper, and a cassette tape case. You don't need it, but it will help cardstock paper. You can also use cardboard, anything that you can use as like kind of a thick filler paper for the end. And one other thing that will help you out a lot is a paper cutter. It's way quicker than using scissors. So these are all going to be games that are coming in the mail soon, and I just like to get the cases out of the way. Um, so I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I make them. So let's get right into it. These are the cases that I use. These are from duplication.ca. They make cassette cases, cassettes. Basically, they make them without the pins so that the games can actually fit in there uh, perfectly. That's not actually what they're for. They're for actual cassette tapes. They come in different colors and they have different sizes. But uh, yeah, these are the ones that I buy. I got like 50 of them for like maybe like 15 bucks. Uh, it is a Canadian site, so I'm not sure about shipping to the United States, but yeah, this is what I use. Alright, so now for the actual box art making process. So what you're going to want to do, go on Google, you can search for the cover art of any of the games that you're looking to make a box for. You're just going to need a front cover image and then a spine image, then you set it accordingly. Then, when you're done placing the image. Also, this is all on Microsoft PowerPoint. That's what works best for me. You're going to want to send these images to the back behind the template. You can get a template off of Google and uh, then you just want to reuse the template over and over again because there's no use in making a new one for every time you want to print a game. So now for the printing, you're going to want to always uncheck two-sided. Make sure it's always in landscape and one other thing, for me at least, uh, these might be different for you, but I have to scale it to 77%, just so that it's the perfect size for my cases. Then you're ready to print. Alright, so after it's all printed, you're just going to want to cut along the lines of the uh, pages, and then you're all ready for the next step. I think that these case templates look really awesome for the games that I got. I have them all right here. What you're going to want to do, I'll show you guys with one, you're going to want to fold along the line. So the best way I've found is you just got to follow it through. It's hard to kind of show you guys and do it at the same time without messing it up, but basically keep moving along the line. Then you're going to want to do it with this line right here, and then you're good for the next step. Alright, so now that we have this all bent, it's in the perfect shape, bent it into place. We're going to open up the case. This is going to be the front cover. So you're just going to want to slide it in, push it down with your fingers, then you can close it up, and you're good to go. So if you guys were wondering, I decided to buy my Kirby's Dream Land, the Japanese version, because, believe it or not, the only thing that's Japanese is this logo right here. On the cover, everything else, the whole game, literally everything in the game, even like the menu screen, the title screen, all in English. And I paid like $10 for it. Meanwhile, the North American version of the game goes for like $30, $35. So I saved a lot of money getting a Japanese copy. No downside to it. All Game Boys are uh, compatible with all regions of games. So you may think that's it, but it's really not, because if you see here, the uh, cover is actually pushed back because when you print on paper, when the ink uh, dries, it tends to bend the page. 
So it is not flat whatsoever, and there's kind of like a bulge in it. So we're going to be fixing that right now. This step is not hard at all, so you can do it two ways. I found that the sloppier way honestly works better, but I'll show you guys both. So the first one, basically, you just take a piece of paper, and in the bottom, you just want to push it in there and fit it right up against the back, just like that. And what you can do, press in with your fingers and create a line, make a little seam on both sides of the bottom. And then when you take it out, you can see exactly where the fold is. You fold it, stick it back in, and perfect. The only downside to that is that you will have a loose game cartridge might not matter to some of you, but to me it kind of annoys me it rattling around in the case. So what I do is I do kind of the same thing. What I do is I take the longer end and I just push it in. So basically this little lip right here will kind of hold and hug the cartridge when you stick it in there and it won't move around and it'll also do what we intended, which is make the game cover push right up against the front of the case. And now I'll just show you all the art for all of the uh, games we made. So there's Kirby's Dreamland, Terminator 2, and we have Super Mario Land 2. And I'll just show you guys the uh, spines. So, that's exactly how you make Game Boy cartridge cases. Thanks for watching, and if this helped you, or if you enjoyed watching the video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.